trauma. So any full thickness injury to the cornea, like our patient, sclera or both, is considered an open globe injury. Some of the open globe injury looks obvious if there's like already the eyeballs barely there, obviously it's an open globe injury, but some is a bit more subtle. So if there's a damage to the posterior segment of the eye, it's associated with a high frequency of permanent visual loss. Okay? So it occurs when there's a blunt object, I just imagine a blunt object compress the eyeball along the anterior posterior axis. So it compress the eyeball, I'll show you a picture. See, it's like this, if it compresses the eyeball, okay, and because of such high intraocular pressure, the sclera tests. If it goes into the posterior aspect or really posterior um, chamber, you can almost guarantee that the visual loss will be there. Okay, so um, if the cornea alone or cornea sclera, remember, that means it is a globe injury, alright? So how to recognize this, okay? If the patient comes in, if the patient comes in with a penetrating lid injury, okay? There's a lid injury, you have to already suspect be on high alert, okay? So these are simple things that you can see if uh, to suspect a globe injury, yeah? This is a bullet subconjunctival hemorrhage. Okay, a bullet, uh, this patient actually fell from a height. It's a child. Okay, he uh, fell from a height. Okay, and um, a subconjunctival hemorrhage is when you know the white part of the eye, uh, the subconjunctiva. There's a lot of very frail, small fragments, uh, vessels. So when during the impact of the trauma, the vessel ruptures, the bleeding. That, that's what you get, a subconjunctival hemorrhage. Okay, that's the first most obvious sign. You don't need any tools. Patient walk in glaring at you that side okay all right so another thing that you can see is a high femur okay high femur as you see the lower part down there not very clear see the redness okay so high femur means there is some red blood cell in the anterior chamber blood is cooling okay the next is a peak pupil okay you see the, the anamata there is not normal the shape is abnormal okay so this means there is a uh, actually this patient had a penetrating um, he was stabbed with a knife in the eye okay so this was how he sustained the injury okay um, this usually uh, points towards that the patient has a corneal or a sclera defect okay? it may it may not be um, uh, so obvious but if you see this sort of shape this teardrop sign uh, so you can already suspect as a corneal or scleral injury okay uh, Alright, can you see this, the black lining that is a bit elevated on the side? You see the arrow, right? Okay, so the logic behind this is that the tissue of the eye has concentric circles, rings. Okay, uh, rings like the inner tube of a tire. Okay, one after another after another. If there's a blunt trauma, the intraocular pressure rises. So the globe is forced to expand. And so because of the stress on the different on the rings, right, it causes it to stretch and stretch and stretch until in the sufficient force it causes the tissue to tear. Okay, when it tears, you get this sort of bulging up because it's no more in the permanent ring, the stress is so much, you cause this bulging up. This is called uh, iridodialysis. Okay. So um this is a retinal this uh, detachment. You can see the yellowish um, orangish mass in the side. Okay, that's a retinal detachment. Uh, this is a um, this patient got an injury while mowing the lawn. Okay, potong rumput, pakai safety goggles. So this is how he got the injury. Okay, so you just look at the rumput masuk dalam mata. Okay, I think the he hit a bat or something. Oh. It uh, flew in his eye. Yeah, so you can see this one is quite easy to pick up because it's very obvious. The whole thing is occluded. Okay. And this is a deflated globe. Okay, also quite um, quite um, uh, obvious to see. Like, this patient actually walked into a door, that's all. So walked into a door, I don't know what force or what door. And this is the whole globe is completely deflated. Okay? Um, Alright, so you will see different different kinds of presentation. Like in this patient, you see the subconjunctival hemorrhage is the most. Okay, it's obvious, walk in, you have to suspect it, alright? Okay, and of course, if the patient has the history of trauma, this is also quite um, obvious. Okay, you see the whole retina is completely detached. So all of this, you must remember, it's an emergency because it's a vision threatening. Okay, 
Alright, so in this patient, actually he has some high fever. You can see his mild redness down there is collecting blood in the uh, anterior chamber uh, and subconjunctival hemorrhage. And of course, if the patient comes in with a, uh, uh, this is also a subconjunctival hemorrhage, uh, it's very obvious. Alright, and um, if the patient comes with obvious injuries, okay, like this, it would be vision threatening. Okay? Right, so this, this all should go to Lusas, because it's an emergency thing here. Right, okay, or this one. Okay, so you can't even barely see the globe at all. Alright? Okay, so how do we examine? Alright, so there's many steps to examine the eye. Um, in our in our Lusas and our ED, we, we don't have all the specified uh, tools like the Ophel does. But we can determine and come to a conclusion that the patient has a globe uh, rupture. Okay? First thing when the patient comes in, you need to examine externally well. Check the face, the orbital area, the eyelids. Okay, so what you do is you can um, first you have to rule out if the patient has any life threatening, limb threatening. Both of that need to be addressed first. ABC is the same. After that, when you come to this, the examination for the eye. You start with the external, alright? So you check the orbits. If there's any bony deformity, if there's any foreign body, would you take out a foreign body like the one with the with the uh, nail stuck in? No, uh, you're not supposed to manipulate anything. All of this is surgical emergency, okay? So if you palpate, if any crepitus, if you feel any palpable fracture, okay? So um, and sometimes what can, the patient can have uh, exophthalmus or endothalamus. That means sometimes the eye can be like the whole globe protruding out. Sometimes the whole globe sunk in. Okay, so this is what you can see in sort of patients, alright? Um, also check the cornea and sclera. Okay, so this one, here you can use the help of your um, fluorescent stain. Sometimes it's very obvious, you can see a laceration across the cornea. Okay, like, set the blue one, it is, it's a laceration part. Sometimes very mild, very subtle, you might need the help of some fluorescent stain to see the uh, laceration wound. Okay? Pupils. The pupils, you should see the shape. How is it? Is it like a teardrop? Obviously, you know. Okay, globe rupture. Uh, you can see the uh, size also. So, another thing that you need to check for is the light reflex. This patient here, when the patient came in, when we checked the pupils, the right side, the one with the injury, is fixed dilated. Even with the with the torchlight, you, you shine light to it, it doesn't constrict at all. Okay? So um and also you can check for the afferent pupil defect. How you check this is using the uh, using the uh, swinging flashlight test. Okay? So that's uh basically in a normal eye, if you shine the torch in one eye and it constrict, the other one should also constrict normal reflex. So, but it's a consensual um, reflex. But in this patient, even if one constricts, the one that is had the abnormality will still remain dilated. Okay? So that is called the swinging flashlight test. Okay? Also, you can see the anterior chamber. We don't have a slit lamp. Say, you can use the ophthalmoscope. You can see if there's any, uh, like a high fever, this collection of blood in the anterior chamber. Okay? Um, besides that, you need to check the visual acuity. Use the acuity chart. See the peripheral visions. The patient has any diplopia. You need to assess any extraocular movements because if they can't move the eyebrow per se, he could be having a, a blowout fracture. Or it could be a fracture in the orbital floor or the venal wall of the orbit. Okay? And also any confrontational visual fields. They can see anything else blurry, blurry, or, or any uh, like blackish uh, discoloration in the visual field. Right? As soon as you come to a diagnosis, the patient has a ruptured globe. You can stop the examination, okay? Because you want to minimize our manipulation here. This patient needs to be seen in the OT and needs to go to the OT immediately, all right? So you can use protective shield. Okay, okay and one of the recommended way I say suggested lah. If let's say on the field cover, the globe much more rupture, you have no eye shield. You can just use simply a, a, a polystyrene cup. Cut. <laughs> so, that's a suggestion. Uh, no choice. You use that cup. Because the moral of the story time is vision. Okay? So everything needs to be done fast and efficiently. And the patient, if needs surgical intervention, he needs to go into the OP fast. It's same like an intra-abdominal injury. Alright? So. Yeah.
The suggested management, okay, is um, a fox eye shield, okay, or a rigid device. Okay, this is all stuff we can do in our ED setting, okay. Anti-emetics is actually suggested because when the patient start vomiting, vomiting, increasing the pressure, yeah. So if you are worsening the damage, okay. Sedation, if the patient of course the need is restless or uh, analgesia, the patient is going to be in some pain. This prophylactic antibiotic um, is to prevent any more further internal eye injury. Lah. Okay, so uh, in here for our patient, they actually uh, prescribe the patient on some clocks up. Okay, the patient needs an ATT. Okay, ATT from the uh, uh, it's same like any other external injury. Okay, so definitely management by the ophthalm, surgical repair if needed. Okay, and in our setting, try not minimize manipulation to the eye to uh, in case if it's going to worsen the outcome later. So this is a fox shield. This is what we have in our setting. Okay. Alright, this is a CT uh, X-ray, actually plain X-ray. I, I don't know why they did a plain X-ray, but they incidentally found a foreign body in the eye. Okay. And this is a CT scan of a globe rupture. You see, the eye is almost completely protruding out. Alright. Okay. Thank you very much.